How's it going, boys and girls? Today we are going to talk about propeller shafts or drive shafts and U joints and things. Uh, it's still quarantine time. I'm still trying to figure out how to teach from home. And uh, so, as usual, um, I teach in a Toyota program, but I don't have the Toyota parts I need here that are bad. So, today I have a PTO shaft out of one of a uh, piece of farm equipment here that we have. And um, I busted a yoke, and, but I had a spare shaft that actually has a slipper clutch on it. So I'm gonna end up modifying this shaft. Uh, I'm gonna have to change one of the yokes on it so that it'll fit on my machine. And then uh, upgrade a little bit here. But since I'm here, I'm gonna go ahead and throw new U-joints in this shaft just to show you how to do it. It's the same thing as doing cars, really. Um, and hopefully I won't have to mess with this piece of equipment for a while and keep all this stuff running. Um, so let's start. If we look in TIS, first thing it says to do is pull out some lock rings, uh, use a special puller tool and a hammer and a punch or a drift to knock out the U-joints and they've got some vice action going on here and the pictures are not real high quality. Because this is one of those tasks that takes a lot of brute force, or not really a lot of brute force, it takes some brute force. And uh, a hammer, it's the best way to do it. There are U-joint presses, you can use the hydraulic press. Um, if you were in trouble and all you had was a hammer and some pliers and a couple blocks of wood, you could get it done. My favorite way is just to hammer in the old press. Um, it seems to work best with me. That's the way I was taught when I was a kid, and it still seems to be about the most efficient way I've found. So let's start with a U-joint. Or maybe what is a U-joint? This guy inside here is, is a universal joint. Uh, it goes inside a dry shaft, and it allows the dry shaft to spin at an angle as the suspension moves up and down and still drive the vehicle. Um, actually, this one's kind of noisy, so maybe it is, does need to be replaced. Hopefully, we'll see some good stuff inside it. Uh, it's held on with some clips on each one of the uh, cups for it. So we'll start by taking the clips off. They're pretty simple. Uh, let's see how well I can do here. Uh, this style here, you just squeeze with a pair of pliers and you can take them out. Speed things up. All right, four clips out. Now then, these cups are press fit in there, and we're going to drive them out with a hammer. So there is actually pictures on TIS of where you can hit and where you can't hit. If we hit right here with a hammer, we'll roll this edge over and we'll never get that cup out and we may never get the new one in. So your area you can hit is right here, okay? That's your area that you can hit it. Same thing here, you can hit right here. It's a pretty beefy piece of metal. It's okay to hit it. Um, we don't want to break it or bend it, but we do want to get it out of there. So let's start here. Now then, normally you would want to mark where each piece is on the shaft. Okay, these things are balanced. We want to retain that balance. So we want to mark where it is on the shaft. Uh, let's see. I don't have anything good on this one to mark. I'm just going to take a screwdriver and scratch an X on it on two pieces. So that when I put this thing back together, I know where that X lines up. And same thing when you take it out of the car. Tiss says to mark where the yoke came off of the transmission or the flange for the diff, wherever it came from. And then uh, it wants you to mark that so that you can put it back in exactly the same spot it was. That's probably more of a wives tale than anything else. But the idea behind it is if it wasn't vibrating before and you put it on exactly where it was in the past, it should not vibrate now. Um, and I actually kind of participate in that one. I'll go ahead and mark and put it back on, even though I know it probably doesn't make a difference. But we'll go from there. So. I'm going to set my shaft where it's just sitting on top of the vise and I want to allow my outer yoke to be able to drive down through 
and the actual shaft itself be supported by my uh, the jaws of my vise. And then I'm going to hit it right here. And what's going to happen is this is going to drive this cup up, hopefully. So you see this cup is coming up? Every time I whack it, it moves a little more. Now I'm going to get to a point where I can't go anymore. We'll flip it over to the other side. So that cup came up from where it used to be like this. Let's do the same thing on this side. Okay, probably all I'm going to get for the moment. Sometimes you can grab these with a pair of pliers or your fingers and pull them out. Um, sometimes you can just make a mess and stack up the needles inside it, which will give you some more space to whack on it. And it'll come out the rest of the way like that. Now then one of these cups is filled with little needles that act as the bearing for this guy. Um, you could go through and inspect and make sure that you got bad parts and this one here is actually pretty happy looking we would look uh, for wear on this guy right here. now you can see a little wear on it see those lines where it's been sitting there walking that's probably the beginning of the end for this one so that's bad if uh, these needles fall out, right? And we need those needles. So when you're using or handling your new one, you want to be very careful not to spill out any of your needles because if it does, if they're not all there, your new one won't last very long. It'll it'll vibrate and it'll trash itself pretty quickly. Uh, clean workspace is kind of nice here too, so that when they do drop, you can find them and you can tell the difference between the new ones and the old ones. All right, you might get a little better viewing angle this time. So for this one to get the trunnion out of here, I'm just gonna rest the two ears on the jaws of the vise. Then we're gonna whack this shaft back here. This cup is gonna drive up, hopefully. Maybe a little tighter. Probably all I'm going to get for right now. We'll flip it over and try the other side. Be nice to in there. Hey, there we go. The bottom one fell out. All right. We're going to st try and stack some needles up. So we'll get some of those needles stacked up in there and then hopefully we can whack it and let me have it like that right there. Come on, be nice. There it goes. All right. And this guy just walks in like a little puzzle piece. Let's see if we got any wear here as well. Got a little bit of wear there. I'll check that out, that's cool. Um, see those lines? Yeah, this thing had some wear. It was time for a new U-joint. Okay, so we've got it apart. Now, it's time to figure out how to put this thing back together. Again, I'm gonna wipe off all these needles right quick, just in case I do happen to drop one out of the new one, I can find it and put it back in. Okay, so that's a new U joint. We're gonna go over here and uh, I'm gonna take the two cups off that I'm not playing with and I'm gonna set them back in the box just uh, so I don't accidentally lose one. And again with the one that I'm not putting in at the moment. So, these cups are all usually all four the same and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and just get it started and it's a little hole here in the axle shaft. Then I'm gonna come over here and walk my trunnion in. And I'll pay close attention to where my hole is for my grease cirque, because we're gonna have to put a grease cirque in this thing in a little bit. So I'm gonna put my grease cirque to the inside on this one, because that's where it wants to be. 
Uh, I just have more space to, for the grease gun that way. And then I'm just gonna use the vise to push this guy in. All right, so it just walks right in like that. That's all it takes. Um, if I need a little more space in there, get some of these needles out of this one out of the way. I can take one of my old caps or even a socket and uh, push it a little bit further with that. Uh, some people would go ahead and put in the clips right now. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and wait just because I like to do them last. So I've got my trunnion in, I've got one cup in, and I'm gonna gently put this next cap on it. Maybe, if I can get it started. Okay, I've got it started. And then I'm gonna slide my U-joint over so that it's partially engaged in both cups. Okay, that way, I know I'm not stacking needles. I'm gonna pull this one apart and double check it because it's scarce. Just the way it went scared me. My needles all look happy. Let's try that one more time. There we go. So I've got my cap started. I've got my trunnion engaged in both of them so none of my needles are gonna get stacked up. And I'm just gonna go ahead and give it a little push over here. Slide that other cup in. Okay. So now that they're both in and I'm not scared about messing up any needles, I'm going to go ahead and start pressing it enough that I can put my clips in to hold this guy. Let's see how well this goes. I'll tell you what, I'm going to switch to a socket just because it's a little bit easier. Pick one a little bit smaller than my cup. Get it nice and straight. I'm just gonna push. We're not going to China there. Just enough to put my clip in. So I've got a groove here. There's a groove in there where the clip lives. So I have enough of the grooves exposed. I should be able to take one of my clips and reinstall it. Normally, you would get new clips with a kit for your U-joint, but this one didn't have them in it for some reason. So I'm have to reuse my old ones. I got one of those guys in there. Now it's time to press this other cup in far enough to be able to get the next clip in. Now then on the reassembly part of TIS, it shows on a Toyota that you can actually measure the uh, free play in the U-joint and get selective thickness clips, which I have never seen before, but uh, that's kind of unique. I'm not sure parts going to have those in stock though. All right, if this guy doesn't go in on its own, we can set it on the back of the vise. Just tap down with their socket and make sure that that clip goes in its groove nice and easy. I'm going to give it some love with the pliers just to check and make sure. I'm happy with that. Trunnion moves. All right, so let's get complicated here. Now, I've got to find my X that I made earlier. There's my X right there on this one. I've got an X on this one. So this guy goes on like this. So both of my X's are up, and this is back in the same way it was when we took it apart. So if it didn't vibrate, it shouldn't vibrate now. I'm gonna get one of my cups started over here. And once I'm happy that it's started, we can use the vise to press it in. Okay, I got plenty of room. Got it in there ways with the vise. Back this out some more. Use my socket to go the rest of the way. Maybe. Okay, there it goes. So 
So that guy's pressed in pretty much all the way. Now then, again, I want to engage my needles from both cups into the trunnion so none of my needles are stacked up. Come over here. Press this guy in with a vise. Now that I'm that far, we can go ahead and finish this one up, put some cup, some clips in it, and then grease there. We'll put the grease circ in and grease it up. All right, down past my little groove for my lock ring. First clip is in. Use my socket to press this guy the rest of the way over. I've got one more clip. Here it is. Okay. That one just went right in on it. Now then, everybody looks happy. So this thing has a grease cirque that goes in this hole right here. This is my grease cirque. Let me grab a wrench for it. That grease already coming out. And we want to tighten it up so that when it's installed, I can get to it with a grease uh, gun installed. Come over here with the grease gun. Grease it up. Let's see if I can do that with this. We're starting to scrape some grease out somewhere. There it goes. So that guy's greased. Everything feels nice and smooth. I've got no free play in it. That's what it takes to put in a U-joint. Uh, it's not the end of the world. It's not that hard. There are times where rust and things can make life more difficult, but that one was pretty simple. Um, now then, this is my old one. I'll show you, it is kind of cool. If you'll notice that both of these are, they're, I would call it splayed. They're actually twisted. Um, so neither one of these yokes is any good. Um, and you can see that I just bought this mower and that had not been greased in a long time. It was pretty nasty in there. So the cups were completely trashed. The yokes were trashed. That's an expensive oops right there. Because uh, these are, at Tractor Supply, these are about 80 bucks a piece. And then the U-joints were 25 bucks, I think. So that's that part. So let's go to the car. And let's do some inspection on the car. Let's talk about how to look at a propeller shaft. All right, got my wife's FJ up in the air again. And we'll see if we can't do some inspection on it. Um, we want to make sure there's no dents or dings in this prop shaft anywhere. Uh, that causes stress risers, which can cause it to fail, which I'll tell you about later. I'll show you an example later. Um, we want to check for play. Now then, these U-joints are actually pretty new. Uh, this thing's got a lot of miles on it, and I've already had to replace both of these in the last couple of years. But uh, that's that part. Now then, these guys right here, these are the weights that go on this drive shaft. They balance these in a, a balancer, much like what you would see for a tire balancer kind of situation. They spin it up, and they weld weights on it. Uh, there's another one over here to balance it, just like you would balance a tire. Uh, those you don't want to come off because it can cause vibration. If you get one that is vibrating, that uh, could be your issue if it's missing one of those. The next thing is, is a slip yoke. Never ever take that guy apart if you can keep from it. If you absolutely have to take it apart, you need to mark it uh, so that you have a line to know how to put it back together. Because if you don't, that will definitely cause it to vibrate. These um, yokes, have to be lined up on the same plane um, to not vibrate. Plus, it was balanced with them in the direction that they're at right now. 
But yeah, and another thing Tish showed was to mark the flanges, mark it here and mark it there to know how to put it back exactly where it was. Uh, the slip yokes on uh, this one here has the normal Forerunner GX470 FJ thump. You pull up to a stop sign in a hurry, uh, hard on the brakes. The vehicle rocks forward and stays still. And then when you let off the brakes, there's a huge thump. And uh, a lot of customers complain like they feel like they got rear-ended by another car. What's actually happening is with these all-wheel dri all drive trucks and stuff, this guy expands when the expansion rises. And... Uh, when you get on the brakes, there's enough force on this to keep it from, from going back in. And then when they let off the brakes, the drive line relaxes and this guy comes back in in an instant and all the energy comes out and it's a uh, rear end of the vehicle lowers down, makes a good thump, it's kind of cool. So this grease cert greases that guy and it looks like this one's ready for some grease too. We'll grease it while we're in here. Another thing for vibration issues is to check the angle of the drive shaft or angle of the yokes, pinion, uh, pinion angle, and things of that nature. So I can't find my normal angle finder that I use for this, but today we're gonna use my phone. So I'm gonna put a socket onto this yoke, onto the U-joint right there, and we're gonna measure the angle of this yoke. And it looks like we're somewhere in a three or four degrees area for this one. When we go to the back and measure the back, Oops, lost it. The back is showing somewhere seven, eight degrees. Okay, so we got about four degrees interference on that. The maximum for that should be usually about six degrees. Um, and if it's wrong, that can cause a vibration that you can't get rid of. And usually it'll be caused by, like this one has some spacers up there on top of the springs to lift this thing up, that can cause issues. Uh, if they lower them with shackles, that definitely causes those issues, but that's drive shaft inspection right there. Uh, to show you how the dents in the drive shaft cause issues, this is what I got. The dent in the drive shaft causes what's called a stress riser, okay? So I got this can, we'll pretend this is a drive shaft. And if I try, this drive, this, shaft can hold a lot of torque okay but if I put a dent in it that's a stress riser so now it just wads right up so and I've actually done this in four-wheel drive stuff um, off-roading but yeah if you see a customer that's got a dent in their drive shaft uh, it's not stupid to replace it you're supposed to replace it for that because it could leave them stranded pretty quickly and easy and when you twist the drive shaft up like that it gets real expensive real fast I'm just gonna tell you uh, but other than that, that's U-joint replacement and drive shaft inspection. If this drive shaft had a carrier bearing in the middle, you'd want to check for the carrier bearing, make sure it's not loose. Um, they can make some neat noises and things of that nature. Uh, if it does have a carrier bearing, you're going to do that angle check at uh, the two rear U-joints and then difference between the middle and the front. So you check a couple different things there because uh, if the carrier bearing is if they do a lift kit and they don't do the spacers right on the carrier bearing, that could cause some neat issues. Um, if you got a leaf spring vehicle with bad leaf springs, I've seen those cause uh, angle issues. Um, but pretty much that's it. Drive shafts are drive shafts. They're not sophisticated. Cool. All right, guys. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, if you want to learn how to make some money in an essential field, uh, look us up at eastfieldcollege.edu. Um, if you want to make some real money with Toyota, look us up at t-ten.com. There'll be links to both of those in the description. And uh, as always, uh, like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.